Welcome back to another Serpents 3 intro tutorial for Blender. In this video we're going to be talking about columns and the benefits and uses of columns, covering all of the inputs on the column node, and covering outputs as well. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So I have a panel here created and I just labeled it column on my 3D viewport. And normally when you just plug things in from your panel, they align vertically. But sometimes you want your properties to also be aligned vertically. So in this case I have uh, some copied properties from a different add-on, Animax. And this animates object really quickly in a collection. And I wanted to be able to grab this enum here. But let's say I wanted to make the enum vertical instead of horizontal because I want my panel to be smaller. So I can do that with a column node. And so this is the same pr display property as this. And you'll notice how it's set to expanded. And we'll cover enums in another video. But I'm expanded out and it expands horizontally. When I go through a column node, it's going to expand out vertically. And I can turn off split layout. I'll cover that in just a second. So now I have a vertical alignment. And if I get rid of this label, it literally looks just different, right? Horizontal versus vertical. Label allows you to label properties that are tied into the column node. So I'm just going to call this the column label. And it throws it in front. Now if I tied multiple items vertically, as long as they're properties, they're going to show up behind or below that label. Um, and every other item will show up after that as well. But if I plug in a label node, that's not a property. A display property node would display a property. So my label ends up showing up above that column label. And if I plug in a button below my property, the button's going to show up below. Now, I can align all of these vertical items here. I'll get rid of my label. And when I click on align, it makes them all hug together. And it gets rid of that white space. And you can align properties with operators and labels as well. You can't really tell with labels, but they are aligning. You can also alert your items. So I covered in the row video a very similar workflow. I've got in my Blend Data Browser, you just click on this and it'll open up a window, or you can set up a workspace for your Blend Data Browser. And in my context, I can go to Screen, and there's an Is Animation Playing Boolean. I just copied that, and then I Shift V to bring it in, and I can bring in that Boolean value whether I'm playing or not. So let's say I'm playing my animation here, and I want these properties to alert. I can plug that Boolean directly into the alert. And it will make the label turn red. It will also make the column label turn red. And it will make a button turn red as well. Now the enum property is not going to change color. So if you wanted a label on top of that, you could do that. Now the, the enabled also allows you to prevent your user from doing things. This is a little more forceful. So let's say while the animation is not playing, I can add an invert, invert boolean node. So there's shift A and under boolean, there's the invert boolean. I can plug that into my enabled. And now everything is disabled when the animation is playing. And when I'm not playing, everything will be enabled again. So that can be really handy for your users to not interfere with your add-ons functionality in certain scenarios. Split layout allows you to split the label from the property. And so when I click on split layout, it puts the label on the left hand side and the property items on the right hand side. Decorate layout allows you to animate the property. And we'll, so we'll cover that in the next section here. But I did want to show the benefits of using something like the alignment. So I copied all these vertical properties here and they all have a little bit of space in between them. And I don't really like that. Um, I like to take up the space, and so I clicked on a line to make them all hug together. And then I also increased their Y scale just a touch. And as you adjust the scale, it allows you to give yourself a little bit more room for your mouse to get in there. The X scale for a column is more for items that are tied um, downstream where you have other, like a column and then a row node. Um, it doesn't really scale a whole ton in the X direction when you're just on a column node. Now let's go to the very next section here and we'll talk about um, connecting my next set of columns. So I've got on my animation, 
I've got these letters and I want to animate my letters while they're also being brought down with Animax's animation. So I can turn on, for this column, I can turn on the split layout and the decorate layout and it allows me to animate and insert keyframes. So I've got a doshi here. And at various times in my animation, I can make my text item spin. This is my rotation property for my item. So let's say I want to go a negative 160, and then I can click on this because I have decorate layout turned on. Now, if you have decorate turned on and split turned off, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. You have to have them both on to get your animation property. And now that I've got the keyframe inserted, when I play my animation, you'll see that my property is being animated thanks to my decoration. Now the expanding options, you can expand and align left, right, or center. Um, these, these don't really do a whole lot when you're just tied to a column node. But again, if you have additional row nodes tied downstream, uh, you could align things using the alignment options here. Uh, they typically come default with expand and it doesn't really do much. So I don't, I don't use those a lot for columns on a basic column setup. We'll, we'll cover more complex setups in the UI in a future video. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll catch you in the next one.